look at what I just got. This is a special something that I'm very excited to unbox. This is my Lego colors poster. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about this because the colors are... Let me take my original colors and like even the camera is picking up on it. These colors are way off. Yeah, I'm not happy about this. Um... <sighs> it is approximately two weeks later and I have gotten a new package. Now, before I open up the second package, I want to give you a bit of background on what this actually is. Bricomotion. Hello, Claire here. So let's go back a couple of years. I had this issue of ordering Lego parts in a particular color, or well, that I thought were a particular color. And then it turned out the parts were of a different color. What do I mean? Well, for example, I would order lavender Lego flower parts only to get a medium lavender flowers instead. Now, I still like those. I will use them, but they are not the ones that I was looking for. These types of things happen to me all the time, way more often than I would like to admit. And I thought I needed a solution. And partially, yeah, this is a thing. It's hard to represent the correct Lego color on a monitor or in print or whatever. It's difficult. Even Lego struggles with this. But I wanted a way to figure it out, to not waste money on parts that I don't need. Anyhow, I resolved to create a Lego colors list that I would keep next to me at all times while ordering uh, Lego parts. And I hoped that would help me. And yes, yes, of course, I could have looked at each and every part and like cross-referenced it with the BrickLink Lego colors list and all of that, like the resources exist. I was just too lazy to click on yet another tab and cross-reference it with that one as well. It was way too much work for me. So instead, I embarked on a two-year journey of creating my own colors list. That was definitely less work. So what I've done is first I selected all of the Lego colors that were in production in 2022 and then I added some other colors that were in production in some years prior that I felt were important to include. The colors that Lego has stopped producing like 20 years ago I feel are irrelevant today. Okay, so that was the colors part. Now, how will I represent those colors? Once again, a brilliant idea just came to me. What if I use this colors list not only to identify the colors themselves, but what if I could also use it to have a reference list of the most useful parts? I love this idea so much that after I had it, it was, there was just no going back. Okay, so I have the colors. I will represent them with the most useful parts. And uh, how do I do that? I kind of already gave you the spoiler, but this turned out so gorgeously that I don't mind showing it to you 50 more times. And I will. Just be assured that until this point we have lost like half a year or something. So what I've decided to do is to have the colored pieces on the left and the right side with the Lego and Bricklink color names in the center. I also added the Lego ID and the Bricklink ID numbers to it because obviously I didn't have enough stuff to do with my life. And then on top, like in the headers, I've put the BrickLink numbers of the individual parts that are in that column. This is so dusty in the meantime. I should have cleaned this beforehand. Oh well. So what we have here is the one by one parts 
on the right side and the one by two part on the left side at least for the solid lego colors because for the others it didn't make sense to do it this way simply because of which parts lego has produced and which one they haven't the transparent and the transparent with glitter colors are the ones that are the most similar to the solid ones in the sense of they are also like meant for building so you do get bricks and plates made out of them so with the transparent ones i was able to stick to the scheme fairly well it basically completely broke down with the metallic colors because they are not meant for building you will see a few plates here and there especially the one by one round ones they are there they exist However, these colors are mostly used for like weapons and accessories. And I think this whole plate represents that fairly well. Like for this copper one, the only things I could find was this sword type of thing. I think this is a sword. I am not really good at swordology. And this dog. So yeah, here representing the color with anything was way more important to me than sticking to the outlined pattern. The opalescent colors might be my favorite colors that LEGO is producing at the moment. You can see that this plate is kind of sparse. That's because those colors are new and LEGO has not produced many of them yet. And for the satin transpurple one, I couldn't even get an example because it came in one part and that was Andreas summer cube like the part is huge and it wasn't actually available to buy in Europe at all so it's not on there the glow in the dark one is also a special and near and dear to my heart because only one of these Lego is currently producing but I felt many of us do have some of these other ones lying around somewhere in the apartment and I just felt these were important enough to include in here. And just having one would be so sad. So I gave it some friends. Anyhow, I had this done. So all I had to do now is take a photo of it and print it out, right? 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 <laughs> no. This is the part where we get to the beginning of this video and me unboxing the first version of the poster. I'm not printing the posters myself. I'm using a print-on-demand company that is doing it for me. And for the first printing, I wanted to try out the matte poster because I like matte posters. I don't like them to be too shiny. Yeah, the poster did not look good. I mean, in the sense of it looked great from like far. The thing is the colors weren't vibrant enough like look at the pieces they are full of colored they look nice and this first colors poster did not reflect that at all but okay not all is lost i know that on glossy paper the colors do shine a bit more so i was very hopeful that maybe next time if also i can bump up the situation a bit on the computer and print the poster on the semi-glossy one instead of the matte one that that would solve the issue okay this is looking promising hmm Let's compare it to the old poster. I feel like you can't see the difference on camera, but the difference is definitely noticeable. The colors pop out more and that is basically all that I wanted. The only thing that was left to do is to compare the colors on the poster with the colors on my original Lego plate. But before I do that, we need to set some expectations. Like, I am not expecting the Lego colors to match my poster 100%. This is a thing that even Lego is struggling with and to expect that I could do by myself one Lego as a huge corporation cannot. 
would just be dumb. What am I talking about? Well, let's look at two examples. The first one is of this crocodile. Look at this green color right here. What is this color? Not sure? Let me narrow it down. Is it sand green? Is it olive green? Or is it lime? Hmm. From the picture, I would say sand green it is not. But this color in person really looks like it's halfway between olive green and lime. If we take a look at the front of the instructions, things become more clear because here it does look like olive green. But in the instructions themselves, it really doesn't. So yeah. The second example I'm going to show you is a castle one. Now, which color are these walls? I will once again narrow it down for you. Is it a lavender or medium lavender? Again, it's very hard to tell because this printed color is exactly in between these two. But what we can do is flip to the other side and see that here we have two shades of lavender colors. And now we can say that the lighter one is probably the lavender one and the darker one is the medium lavender one. Do they match up 100%? Uh, no. But when you compare them and have them next to each other, you can definitely tell, oh, this one's lighter, this one's darker. So that thought is the main one behind my poster. You will probably not be able to match one-to-one -one the color on the poster with the color of the Lego part. But what you will be able to do is compare it with the other colors and then see, oh yeah, this is definitely more dark turquoise than dark azure. 100%. Not that you would actually mix up these two colors, but you know what I mean. With all of that in mind, let's compare the printed version with the original version, the one I took a photo of. What I can definitely see is that some colors are represented better than others, like the coral one is not nearly as vibrant as it should be, but the majority of them are really looking good. I am really happy with this. It is actually way better than I thought it would be. And some of these are even spot on, which I, I had hoped that I would get some of them spot on, but you know, that was never a given. So yeah, that is the current version of the poster that you now can get as well. And it is a great way to support me and what I do here. The poster comes in three different sizes large, which is the one that I like the most because the printed Lego pieces on it are the same size as Lego pieces in real life. Medium one, which can serve as a smaller poster on the wall or even as a big reference sheet on your table. And then the smallest one is the cutest one and also the hardest to read. But that is not all because I know some of you are very sensitive to how color is spelt. So all of these versions that I mentioned you can choose to get in the UK or the US spelling. If you are just into this poster because of how awesome the solid colors look on their own, I have something for you as well. It's even already framed over here. It's simply the solid Lego colors poster, which has only the solid Lego colors on it. And it comes in two sizes. One that's slightly smaller than this and the other one that's tiny. <laughs> Still looks great though. Also, if you're thinking, Claire, this is great. I need this. However, those posters are kind of pricey. Yeah, they are. They are print-on-demand posters. So when you order one, one is going to be printed, especially for you in one of the 32 production centers around the world. So at least the shipping should be manageable. But I get you. There is also a digital version of the poster, which comes again in two different spellings and then in two different sizes, letter and A4. It is great to have as a reference just on your computer, but you can also print it out onto a letter or A4 format to have as a physical copy in front of you. 
How well that will look will depend on your printer and the paper you choose to use. I can just show you what it looks like when I printed it out on a normal paper. But in case that is also too expensive for you, or you don't really care about supporting what I do here, I still got you. I have taken the digital versions of the poster, which come in a 300 dpi resolution, which is great for printing, and I lowered their resolution down to 100 dpi, which is still good enough for looking at it on your computer or even printing it out, but it does not look that good. It's not as crisp. This is what the low resolution poster looks like printed out on the same printer as the digital one. So you can see the difference. But I forgot to say that this low res is free. Yeah. <laughs> the low resolution poster is free to download from my website. And while you're there, you could subscribe to the Precomotion newsletter. Was this poster printing experiment a success or a failure? Depends on how you define success or failure. Now, I talked a lot about all of the colors, but I haven't even started talking about these stickers. <sighs> Until the next time you click on one of my videos. Bye-bye! If you're wondering where you could get those types of stickers, uh, the real answer is you can't. You have to make them yourself. Luck. Now here's what I could have done and spared myself a lot of time, effort and money. I could have just taken a photo of the pieces and then photoshopped in the names. That would have been easy and smart to do. So of course I did not do it. What I've done instead is created a template for printing out the sticker names manually filled in all of the color names and color numbers, ordered some sticker sheets, printed the color names onto the sticker sheets, try cutting them by hand, figure out that does not work. So I bought a cutting machine to do it for me. Was not expensive at all. Learn how to create SVG files so the cutting machine can cut out the stickers. Figure out that the cutting machine does not want to cut out the stickers exactly how you want it. And that you have to try it out on each individual sheet again and again. And that I will lose the first row of each printed sheet. I've come to terms with it, printed some more sheets out, cut them out. Now that I knew that the first row is going to be destroyed, I wasn't counting on it anymore, so it was fine. Except while I was doing all of this, time had gone by and Lego has introduced new colors into the mix. So, okay, I got the template, filled it in, printed it out, cut it out. <laughs> and yeah, of course, I did not have nearly enough white tiles to glue these stickers onto. So yeah, I had to order more. And then I miscalculated and then I had to order some more again. Yeah, so uh, I then stickered the stickers onto the tiles, saw that one of the colors had the wrong name. Like, I'm laughing right now. I did not laugh at the moment I had realized that something is missing and that I will have to print it once more and beg the cutter to cut it out as needed. I don't know if you can tell, but the poster creation process was a tiny bit traumatic for me.